Hello, and welcome to another walkthrough for Django for Everybody. A big part of the first half of this class is what I call the big picture. So in the big picture, you are basic, we're trying to basically learn the ways of a Python Django application. The, a Django application, Django is an application that then you create objects and load those objects in, and in those objects, you achieve your web application. And so this is the flow where the request response cycle, so we've got a browser on the left-hand side, we got the internet, very tiny in the middle, and then we got Django, which is running in a Linux server, and a whole bunch of files that you either have or will be editing. And the big flow is that the user requests a page in the browser, which gets routed into your application, and your application may read database data or whatever, produce some output, and then send it back to the browser where the browser looks at the response and shows it to the user. The request response cycle, that is the essential engine of browsers and the internet. Now, this picture may be the best way for you to think about it, or you may also just think about it as a set of folders and files, because really when you're developing your application, <clears throat> you're working with folders and files. Now the screenshot that I'm showing you that has a folder, autos, hello, home, my site, polls, site, is not like at the very beginning. At this point, it has several applications and several folders. And it might be a little bit easier to understand the big picture when we think about it from a point of view of multiple applications. So in this particular one, their site has files in it, home has files in it, Hello is an application, Autos is an application, and Polls is an application. You, that, you may have already done them, or they may be in the future. Ultimately, in comes a request, and there are parts of your application that participate in that request. So when your application is starting, so if your application doesn't start up very well, or it blows up, or it shows the the um, something went wrong message, that probably means as it was reading settings.py and then the rest of these files, there was something wrong with the file. And then you gotta go fix the files. But let's assume that things in settings.py and the rest of the files at least are syntactically correct enough so that the application loads. Well, Django is a Python application that in a sense is listening for incoming requests. And those requests come to Django but then once it gets a request, like a URL, like slash polls, or slash polls slash two for a detail page, it looks at urls.py, and that's the one that's in my site, urls.py. So there's two urls.py, there's the polls urls.py, and that's the second one, and then there's my site urls.py. In the my site folder, you can see that there is settings.py, which says here is how I'm going to set up my Django environment and also all the applications that I want to load. And then for each of the applications, you're going to see a urls.py and a views.py and perhaps as we get more advanced, the forms, models, and then even admin.py for each application. So other than the my site urls.py, the rest of it is kind of replicated as often as you want. So let's take a look at some sample code <clears throat> in um, Python Anywhere. So here we go, I've got my home directory, Django Projects, my site. Now, one of the things that's a little bit tricky to figure out is my site is the, the overall configuration for the entire Django project. Autos is an application, Hello is an application, and Polls is an application but my site is the configuration for the project. But really this actually starts, the first thing to, to start your application is the settings.py. And this is all of your configuration, what applications, polls, home, and autos are the three applications that I'm going to be loading here. But it really starts before this. So if I go to the web setup, this is the configuration for djfree.pythonanywhere.com. 
So if I go to djfree.pythonanywhere.com, that routes to my application running in Python Anywhere. So djfree.pythonanywhere.com. And so I, this somehow has got a domain name and it routes into a Linux system, but then it eventually starts your application and routes to your application. So from here on down, if you put something on there, you don't really have to worry too much about the first part, djfree.pythonanywhere.com, but you do have to worry about what you're going to, how you're going to handle, and how you're going to write the rest of this URL, right? So I just put in a bad one, and we get page not found. And that's not like your, your application is running. You requested a page that your application does not know how to respond to, okay? Now, if you have problems, you got to make sure that you're, your source code and your working directory are your home directory. And then you want to make sure that this wisgy.py is properly set up. But that was set up in the very first assignment, and you shouldn't need to change that. Um, you've got to have your virtual environment correctly set. You've got to have your Python version correctly set. And if you have problems, you can look at the server log and the error log um, if you're really having terrible problems debugging things. But we're not going to talk so much about debugging. We're going to talk today about routing. Python Anywhere starts when you hit the reload button, it reads settings.py. The WSGI config tells it to read settings.py. And then all the rest of setup of your particular Django instance depends on what you tell it in settings.py. So let's take a look at the settings.py because it's the beginning of your application. So there's a few things. Now, one of the things is this allowed host, which in an early assignment, I set it up so that told you to say anywhere. And that has to do with the fact that there is some filtering going on about whether or not it actually is going to accept any requests from the internet to your application. So you can put a filter in a sense. So we're saying with the settings, um, allowed host equals star, we're saying don't put a filter in. The next thing it needs to do is where to start in terms of what applications need to start. Now, some of the applications are built-in applications and other applications are applications that you've added. So you'll add an application and it'll tell you to add a line to this. Then there is some configuration about middleware. We don't, we won't, we'll change this later. But then it says, load up the URLs for the overall application, okay? And we'll see that where this is in a second. So it's like load up all the URLs for the whole app. When it says root, what it means is anything after djfree.pythonanywhere.com slash, that top part is the root of your application's URL hierarchy. And then we set the database up and then some other things, but that's about it. So this line here, that says my site URLs, well, that is in effect importing another Python object and then running it, doing a Python import of this. Now my site, my site URLs.py. This is what basically sets up the global URL routing, or it doesn't have to be, but for all intents and purposes, the part, the part right after, after the slash. So if I say right after the slash here, it is consulting this URLs.py, and it's got a, a, a list of URL patterns. If it starts with admin, if it starts with polls, if it starts with hello, if it starts with like autos or starts with sites, I know what to do with that. And the second, these other parameters are what to do with those things. What do you do if the URL, the root URL starts with slash polls, right? So right after the slash, well, it says, I don't know what to do with that. But if I say slash polls, it does know what to do with that. And so it knew how to do that based on this urls.py. So it says, if it's polls, and so now I can say, I'm gonna say, I wanna do polls slash this slash whatever, it will route it to the polls application, but then the rest of this stuff has gotta be properly handled by the polls application. And that's what it shows. It says the polls application reports back that it doesn't know anything about LDJFJ. It just can't. And so it's telling us the kinds of things it was looking for. 
there was a bunch of things you can do to polls, like polls slash owner. Well, let's put that in there and see what it says. Polls slash owner. And I like keeping this debug message here. It's the 404 not found message, but now polls owner is routable inside of polls. So let's take a look at that. So polls.url, this is basically a defined import. It's been imported because of the settings.py that loaded up polls config. So if we go into my site polls, so now if we take a look at our, our picture, you know, we just got done talking about the settings.py and the urls.py, and now we're going to decompose one or more of the apps. So we got three apps here. Each one's going to have urls.py. Each one's going to have eviews.py. The rest of things they may or may not have, but urls is not the root URL because the my site, my site urls.py is the root URL. So we're looking inside this application to route within the application. The part that's inside the application is after djfree pythonanywhere.com slash polls slash. And then whatever you put in there, it looks up in the urls.py in polls. So let's go to polls. And let's take a look at the urls.py. And so what this is, this is really saying the path within the application. So this path right here is really slash comment slash polls with nothing. This is like slash polls two. So that's a primary key. And let me push these out a little bit, make them easier to see. These are just comments that I'm adding to make it a little easier to see. So this one here is URLs that look like slash polls slash two slash results. And so what we're doing is the global my site my site urls.py defined polls, but then within it we've got a primary key, we've got a primary key slash results, and we can do oops, not that one. I'll just add these as samples so you can see them. Pound slash polls slash owner, which we just did, and then slash polls to slash vote. And so, and these are little slugs that are going to be passed into our view. Okay, so this is, so in PK says followed by a number and then pass that number in and then the view the detail view is the view that we're going to use, and that's coming from views.py, from dot import views. So I'll just save this. I just added some comments to make it a little easier to understand. So if we go back to our picture, if we have a, a URL that matches an application, then within the application, we look at the urls.py to figure out the within application to route to one of the views, okay? And so let's take a look at the views.py. And oh, let's go back to polls.urls.py. So each of these names, views, this is a sort of a, an imported uh, file, index view. So we're looking, these things have to match. Index view, detail view, results view. It doesn't know what these mean. It could be whatever. And there are two kinds of views. There is a class-based view. Index view is an example of a cat class-based view and views.owner and views.vote are example in this particular case of function-based views. So let's go find index view, polls, index view, views.py, index view. So see index view? This is the code now that runs if you just type slash polls. So all that configuration conspires to get a URL running on a server to line 14 of reviews.py. And we're using a generic list view, which means we don't have to write very much code. I won't cover that in too much detail, but the reason we use class-based views is so that we can extend views that are provided 
from Django. And so from um, the generic views, we're getting the generic list view. And it turns out that all we really have to do is tell it what template to use and what is the context object name that we're going to put in here. And then away we go. And this query set is retrieving what we're going to show in that view. So if you go back, this is a list. We only got one question, so it's not very exciting. And then the only thing kind of left in this picture is templates. And templates are like helpers to the view. A view can use a template. It, put, it comes up with data to paste into that template. And, um, and so if we take a look at the templates, polls, Temp. Now, the name of this is kind of weird, just like my site, my site. The name of this is kind of weird. Polls, templates, polls. And then the index.html, this is in Django template language. And this merges latest question list, latest question list, et cetera, et cetera. And it loops through all those things. So I'm not going to kind of cover all that. I'm just looking at the big picture about how this all works together. Then this, when, when this part is all done, it returns in, we don't see it explicitly because it's just all part of the generic list view. Eventually it returns a response object. A response object is passed back into Django, which is then passed down to the end user. And so that is a quick overview of kind of the flow of things going in and out. You may or may not have covered every single thing that is in this sample code. Um, but basically, I just wanted you to uh, get us just go over one more time all of the stuff that's in the big picture. Cheers.